In this problem, we're being asked to solve this equation by completing the square. So when you're completing the square, um, two things should always be checked right away. So first, um, you should have a one here in front of your x squared, which we do. There's like an invisible, there's an invisible one there because one times x squared is x squared. So that part is done. Secondly, you want to make sure that uh, you have only x terms on one side. So we have that. We have all our x terms on one side and we have a constant on the other. So now we're ready to complete the square. So what you do is you take the coefficient of x, which in this case is called b. It's always called b. And then you always just divide it by 2. So negative 4 over 2 is equal to negative 2. And then you square it. So negative 2 squared is 4. So again, you just take this number right here, divide it by 2 and square it. You can do it in your head. Negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. Once you do that, then you add it to both sides. And that's called completing the square. So plus 4, plus 4. So we have x squared minus 4x plus 4. And then when you add these, you're just going to get 2. And the reason it's called completing the square is because this is going to be what's called a perfect square. It's called a perfect square trinomial because it has three terms, and this expression cannot be written as something squared. That's why it's called completing the square. So now this will factor like magic every time. So it's going to look like this, parentheses x, parentheses, and a 2. And this is all just from memory. I'm actually not factoring. I'm not thinking about factoring. Because we took this number and we divided it by 2 and we squared it and we added it to both sides, this always works. So you just keep the sign and then you just take this number and then you divide by 2. So 4 over 2 is 2. And this is equal to 2. Again, it's pure memory. It's 100% memory. As another example, just really quickly, say we had completed the square on something like this. This would be another example of where it's done. You would take the x, you would keep the sign, and you would divide by 2, so you would get 3. Right? Boom. Every time. If this was a plus, then this would be a plus. Okay? So it's just memory. So divide it by 2, keep the sign. And now we have to get rid of this 2. So what we can do is take the square root of both sides. When you do that, you use what's called the square root property. So on the left-hand side, the squared term goes away. And on the right-hand side, we always get a plus or minus. So plus or minus the square root of 2. We're almost done. The very last step is just to add 2 to both sides. So plus 2, plus 2. So we end up with x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 2. And that should be the final answer. I hope this video has been helpful.